Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. Now we're ready to measure our piston deck height. We need to know the deck height of the piston so that we can properly set the compression ratio of the engine. Some tools you're going to need uh, for this operation is going to be some sort of a caliper. This particular one is a digital caliper. You can also use a vernier caliper. We need to measure in thousandths of an inch the deck height, either positive or negative. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it may help to have a uh, long socket that'll fit through the wrist pin hole on the piston. Sometimes the, the wrist pins will be a little bit sticky and uh, in order to push it back out to take the cylinder off, it might help to have a, a socket that'll fit through the hole and a uh, extension just to use as a, a push handle uh, because uh, your fingers can't quite get in the, the wrist pin hole sometimes. It's also good to have a, a wrench to hold the, or to turn the um, crankshaft. So we're going to want to set the engine at top dead center, exactly top dead center, in order to take our measurement. So uh, it's easy to use a, a socket wrench or a breaker bar with a socket on the uh, center nut on the prop hub to turn the engine. It turns real free right now, so it's pretty easy to do that. And then later we'll use our chart to uh, convert our deck height into uh, compression ratio, and we'll talk about the spacers that go on the bottom of the cylinders to set the proper deck height for the proper con uh, compression ratio. So the first thing we do is install temporarily our cylinder and piston on a rod. We've got the rod at top dead center already. We'll check that as soon as we get the cylinder installed on the engine. I'm looking in the wrist pin hole now to line up the wrist pin so that I can get that started into the connecting rod. There it goes. Should push right in there by hand, no problem. Once we get the wrist pin in the connecting rod, we're just going to line the cylinder up with the hold down studs and push it all the way until it's completely seated against the engine case. Now that we have our cylinder pushed down and contacting the case, our piston's at top dead center, you can see that the piston on this particular engine nearly lines up flush with the top edge of the cylinder. That's not unusual, but oftentimes they won't be quite that flush. They'll either be recessed, uh, the piston will be recessed down into the cylinder, which is a positive deck height, or the piston may protrude slightly from the edge of the cylinder, which is a negative deck height. What we're going to do is we're going to take our caliber and we're going to measure exactly what the difference is between the top of the piston and the uh, edge of the cylinder. We'll use our caliper. We're just going to, we're going to use our pointer on the end of our caliper and you can see the pointer come out there and we're just going to pr press that pointer down on top of the piston and then set the edge of the caliper on the rim of the cylinder and that'll give us a measurement of what the difference is between the two surfaces. I'll just make sure my caliper stays nice and square against the rim of the cylinder and if you look at our caliper here, it looks like we're right about at 14 thousandths of an inch is the uh, deck height of this particular uh, engine. Now we could do this on all four cylinders, and it really doesn't hurt you to do all four cylinders individually. Uh, I have not yet come across an engine where the cylinders are not the same uh, throughout the measurement. They always come out within a, a half a thousandth generally, or maybe a thousandth of an inch. But it doesn't hurt to check them all just to make sure. Now that we know that measurement, we're going to take a look at our compression chart and we'll take that measurement and we'll compare it to our chart and decide uh, how many uh, shims we need for the bottom of the cylinder in order to set our compression ratio uh, at the proper uh, compression ratio that we want. Now we have two charts in the Aero-V uh, assembly manual. One is for a 7 to 1 compression ratio and one is for 8 to 1 compression ratio. 
If you're building a normally aspirated engine and you want to use 100 low lead uh, aviation fuel exclusively, you can go up to the uh, 8 to 1 compression ratio without any problem. If you are going to build a normally aspirated engine and you're going to want to have the opportunity to possibly run auto fuel, then you're going to want to stick to the uh, 7 to 1 compression ratio to give you just that little extra protection against uh, a knock. Uh, with the auto fuel. Also if you're building a turbo engine, uh, we've tested the turbo engines at both 8 to 1 and 7 to 1. Uh, we haven't been able to measure any difference in the performance between the two compression ratios because the turbo is doing so much work for you. Uh, so uh, most of my engines that I'm putting together or helping uh, builders put together with the turbo in mind, we're setting the compression ratio at 7 to 1 and we're letting the turbo do its job uh, to produce the power. So this engine is going to end up being a turbo engine. So uh, we're going to set our compression ratio at 7 to 1. So we look at our chart and we are right around 10 thousandths of an inch uh, is where our measurement came out. So we're going to find go to the 0 to 10 thousandths uh, mark here. And it's a positive deck height because the uh, piston is slightly below the rim of the cylinder. So it's zero to plus ten thousandths in that range. This tells us that we'll need our sixty thousandths head gasket, which is, of course, used in all cases. And it also says that we will need a ninety thousandths and two forty thousandth shims at the bottom of our cylinder in order to set our deck height properly for uh, seven to one compression. The Head gasket looks like this. It's just a uh, copper gasket. It's 60,000 thick. That'll go in our uh, cylinder head when we mount the cylinder head, so that takes up part of our deck height. And then the cylinder uh, base shims look like this. This particular one is a 90,000 shim. Uh, they come in three different thicknesses. They come in 90,000, 60,000, and 40,000. And depending on what your measured deck height is, and what your compression ratio requirements are, you'll use the table in order to figure out which shims you need to install on your cylinders when you permanently install the cylinders on the engine to give you the proper compression ratio. That's how we do that. Now we're ready to install our cylinders.